Action! One more! Oh! 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 Oh!
pain. Yes. People just always assume that I'm a raging bitch. <laughs> like, no. Yes. Seriously, I'm just gonna put it out there. So, do you think they feel like you're the angry black woman, no. or just more so of a don't talk to me? No, I think what it is is that my energy is so out there. It's mm. in your face. It's commanding. Yeah. That's that people mean. misinterpret it a lot. Yeah, you have a very confident. Mm -hmm. My energy is mean. Mm -hmm. Sometimes so. it overwhelms me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. I love it. Sometimes I love it overwhelms it. me. I love it. Um, but I think most people, because it's so much to take on at mm -hmm. once, you know, when they feel it, mm -hmm. they just completely misinterpret it. I got you. I, yeah. I get that. You gonna go real quick. They always read the, the cover wrong. Yeah. I feel you. Always yeah. read the cover I wrong. read it. Um, what is it? You read the back. Read the bio. The profile. Yeah. Right. Read, read about the author. Yeah. The cover doesn't look as good and the synopsis is great too, but you know, she she paints the pictures well for a reason. Know about her. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that. I was just going to say really quick, you know, when people see me, it's an assumption that I've always got like, I was Snotty stuff go. I got that stand No, you bitch. definitely give the rest in bitch face. Totally, but I was born with Everyone does <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Not because if I'm not smiling at work, they'd be like, are you having a good day? I'm having an awesome day. No, what's going on? Don't you hate when they're like, are you sure? I'm like, I'm it's fine. fine. Like, I'm like, fine. They're about to give me an attitude. No, I can tell you all the time. I'm going to smile and be happy. I can just be, you know, normal. You know what I told y'all all my stories. I'm on my business. Why? I really be in my you own know, world. You know, I'm not in it. But yeah, so I thought that was the great example because I really be in my own world, and it's been that way it's since third grade. Thing. I got sent to the office because of how I look. My teacher swore yeah. I had an attitude with her. I I really did. Like I was really scared of her. So it's, oh, you know, it's the opposite. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. great. <laughs> I mean, for me being African, like I just. And you know, it was maybe ignorance just growing up, but when people would make comments such as, So when your parents were in Africa, did they run with the lions and stuff? <laughs> Excuse me, we are not uncivilized. You are so you want to tell you what you should have said back. Like back. When you was on your way to school, did you walk by a tree and see a little hanging from it? But there are stereotypes out there, such as the angry black woman, like, mm -hmm. and I feel like that definitely changes how we act in society because we don't want to be labeled as the angry black woman. And Naj had a great example earlier, which I'm sure she'll mention in a second, but it's like, you got to hold back or kind of like hide who you are because you don't want to be labeled as this negative thing that they put out into society about us. Right. So it sucks, because we can't really be ourselves, because right. it will be misinterpreted. Totally, right. or you can't be too loud. Like, right. we can't be too loud, because they feel as if we're right. loud. You just feel like you have to be a shell, or like a portion of yourself. Exactly. And me personally, I'm loud, but I, I don't even think it's being loud. My voice is just caring. When I talk, yeah. you gonna hear me. Right. Yeah. You, got, you gonna hear what I got to say. Exactly. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I mean, when y'all see Amanda raising hell in the store because god damn it, they didn't get her latte correct. <laughs> She's not an angry white woman. Oh, okay. But if I <laughs> if I turn up in the hell store, <laughs> right. Now she now she ghetto. You know, now she brash, now she rude, now she don't know how to act. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's for real. It's, it's trash. And I've worked in fast food before, and I'm not trying to make this a race thing. Because I was down in like the Indian area, but it was mostly Indians and white people giving, you know, raising more hell than the black folks mm -hmm. were over chicken. <laughs> <laughs> over chicken. She like, I'm like, no, I'm like, man, you ain't got food. <laughs> it goes to, you gotta remember the episode of Scandal, 
where Olivia said that her dad always told her you have to be twice as good. Yes, yeah. that's why I that was something that stuck with me. Because I'm like, real. damn, really? You have to be twice as good, work twice as hard for mm -hmm. a quarter of the recognition. Exactly. As a black woman. Because you're black and you're a woman. Speaking right. on that, like, I just thought about it. Like, in school, going back to my voice and how I sound, I would get offended when people would say, I'm well-spoken. Because it's like, oh, because I'm black and I sound white, that makes me well-spoken. Mm -hmm. What if I had a little twang to my voice? Would that suddenly <laughs> mean I'm not well-spoken? I can still be intellectual. I can still be super intelligent and sound like I grew up wherever. I don't yeah. know. It, I, I don't think that should matter, you know? And then, yeah. You have to think about, too, sometimes. That's why I know people's ignorance because... Not necessarily ignore sometimes you have to tell them about themselves, but depending on where you're at, sometimes like small areas, they're not used oh, to certain course. stuff. Of so course. I come from a small area and I can remember when you said that I was working somewhere and uh, when I was in high school then a white girl said to me, she was like, You're not like the other black girls, mm. I really like you. Mm. I was like, Is that yeah. like I don't know, I've heard that before too. Yeah, and I'm like, hold up, chill. Like, right. Which which might be why I ain't got no white friends. But we still cool to the day. <laughs> right, yeah. But I had to let her know, like, that that was very offensive. Like, right. I don't know who you're around. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Hey. See, I don't know. I guess I grew up different. Like, I never was really offended by it when I was younger. But now I'm just like, damn, like, it's crazy. blackness is it's the exactly. first thing people see is right. blackness. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, it's just like, it's such a shame that there's such this negative connotation, like, associated with how we're portrayed. Exactly. But, Everybody, they want the vernacular, they want the culture, right. they want the look. They want but how do everything you... black except to actually be black? But I don't understand oh, how you're constantly like putting us down or trying to diminish us, but when you want, yes. you want most yes. people hate what Child. they love. Like if you think about it. But the fact Nipsey hustle, I love you. But <laughs> <laughs> if you're sitting here watching this with Dom Kennedy, I love you, Dom Kennedy. I'm I love the whole West Coast. Everybody. Kendrick, all oh, yeah. Kendrick, but, please. I just want to work for TDE. So if you're seeing this, <laughs> <laughs> I have a degree in business administration with a concentration in entrepreneurship. I work for Blavity in marketing and brand strategy Love. as an intern. And you know what? I may not be able to sing or whatever, <laughs> but you know, I got the eye. Hit him with the twinkle, twinkle, little star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Uh -huh. How I wonder what you are. Uh -huh. Up, hey. up, up, the world so high. Uh -huh. Like a diamond in the <gasps> sky. Twinkle, twinkle, <gasps> little star. How I wonder what you are. <laughs> 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 but, okay, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. Nip said this in Victory Land. He said that. They call us dumb niggas, but our culture is contagious. Hey. Mm. I was like, man. That is so true. Message. Message. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. And that's going to fly over a lot of y'all head, but mm -hmm. you know it. The, the real ones are getting it. Is, oh, how many of y'all have been told you are pretty for a black girl? Oh, all the time. Oh, y'all supposed to raise y'all hand with me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, understood doesn't have to be explained. Yeah, you you are right. now. But what you mean? Can I just be gorgeous? Yes. Oh, gorgeous! Because no, no, you can't walk around a white girl saying you pretty for a white girl. You pretty to be a dark skin girl. Like, that, right? that too. That's Ooh. a whole And then they have, but they have, they have reason behind it. No, no, no. Because most dark skin girls, they hair is. I, was, I don't want to fight. Look, I was told by one of my ex boyfriends that I was the first dark girl he dated. Oh, like he <laughs> and I guess he thought that was supposed to be an honor history. to me. You made his. <laughs> Nigga, okay? Talking about, oh, well, it's just that back where I'm from, none of the black people. Well, you're not there anymore. And blah, right. blah, blah. Nigga, maybe they thought your ass was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell the dude that at my job. Y'all had sex, on. All day, date black girls. I said, no. Black, black girls don't, don't hate you. you. Right. Because right. you ain't hitting on Nate. That's hey. real. That is so real. I ain't no I feel which this is a perfect way to go ahead and transition into societal pressure. Yeah. Well, with it. the whole dark skin thing, it's like people are out here, celebrities included, it's very obvious with a lot of y'all, some of y'all, Charlemagne. 
Charlemagne. I, mean, I like Charlemagne <laughs> sometimes. But I mean Let's be real. He's I, always himself. I respect that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I I just I don't agree all the time with right. the, the way he goes about You're not supposed to. Okay. But yeah, going back to it, like dark skinned people have kind of been well, I won't say dark skinned people, I'll say dark skinned women because dark skinned men are praised in society. We know why. You know, tall, dark, handsome, whatever, they love the chocolate men. I understand. But when it comes to dark girls, that's where there's an issue. Right. And I feel a lot of times people have resorted to bleaching their skin mm -hmm. and other methods just so they can feel accepted in society. And I think that's really sad because once again, we're, we have this culture and we have these lives where people literally try to emulate us. They don't have tanning beds for no reason, okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> but you're steady trying to lighten your skin when they're trying to be just like Ryan. In the same, in the same instance of them going to get, going to the tanning beds, they're telling you you're not pretty because you're darker. And that's what's so messed up about our society. I feel like it contradicts itself so much. Mm -hmm. I felt that. So that's just my little tidbit on yeah. it. Colorism, that's another episode we can, that's another topic we can hit on. But, that's real. Yeah. Ooh, so yeah, societal pressure, I think being lighter equals being deemed more, being, deemed more being attractive. Deemed more attractive. Mm -hmm. Okay, getting into that, I think um, being skinny and thick, somebody can hit on whatever, which one I don't hit on. But, um, I guess I can say being thick because me being a small girl, I'm around a lot of thickness. My, be my best friend, she thick. She motivates. She motivates me. I'm like, dang, I wish I was thick. But really, you just gotta love to be yourself. I just exactly. like everybody's body isn't built to be small or big, whatever. You gotta be you. Like you can't be. Oh my like, god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we cut that part. And who's to say if like literally in the next five, ten years, being skinny will be in and all the girls who went and got blood injections and all that extra stuff gonna be taken out. Oh, woe is me. I don't have the ideal body type. And that's what rubbed me about what's her name? Amber Amber Rose or whatever. Oh, her's a natural though. Mm -hmm. Weren't they? She was a stripper. Am I am I misinformed? Anybody that, that was a stripper done got some work done. I don't know. I mean oh, no. no. She might be I thick. Think, no, I think she's natural. I think she's a natural body. I do. She might, I don't, we gonna have to Google that. I don't know. We can look into it. Maybe she is, but I just didn't like how like she tried to she she tried to make the comment that you know she got hated on growing up because she was like a traditional beauty or whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 not necessarily because <laughs> back in the day, thick wasn't in the um, the Nia Longs were in the the slim. You know, the Naomi Campbell. Yeah. I would say, well, even going from there to, I think with societal pressure, I think, I guess where I get there is like, people are so quick to be judgmental. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that really I don't agree with. I mean, I'm human, so I do judge people from time to time. I can't be Petty Crocker, I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, feel like that's why so many people feel pressure and feel things that they don't have to feel. It's all yep. brought on by societal stereotypes. Right. The whole thing all comes together. Right. But I feel like it's just people spend so much time judging other people or worrying yep. about what people have going on that I think that's more of a message to what they are going on with internally. Exactly. Because I'm like, you know, for me, I'm not worried about what you have going on. I'm judging myself constantly. Right. Yes. Honestly, I'm only in competition with myself. Yeah. You know, so I feel like even then, I think that's the easiest way to combat all of that stuff. You know? mm -hmm. I'm judging myself constantly. I don't really care what you have to think. Right. Exactly. I think societal pressure also touches on, like, if you think about age, like, for example, people feel as if because you're this age, that age, you should be doing this, you should be doing right. that. Let's say I move back home and live with my parents. Because if I do this at home, they say, why are you here? Or I'm like, well, dang, I'm just right. 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 Because then, right. No, because then when you don't come home, it's like, oh, don't forget where you came from. So right. Right. you want me to stay with home or do you want me to come home? Right. Right. And recently someone was like, I've been seeing you a lot often. Well, I ain't got no job, so I can do what I want right now. Right. 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 But if I, I'm saying, so if I wanted to move back home and that that would be fine. It's just, it doesn't matter like what age you are. You can do what you want to do. Society yeah. is no, doing it. 
Right. Society makes you feel as if, okay, by, by 30, I have to have this done, I have to be married. I think it's great that, you know, you have goals and you plan, but at the end of the day, what society says doesn't make, doesn't make it right. Exactly. And half of these is, billionaires, I need to cut you off. You could. Half of these billionaires were like 30, 40, 50 before they seen a million. Right? Not only that, half of these billionaires were born into it. Like, yeah, I don't even care if it's shade, but people love to, especially the people who voted for Trump, love to brag about how he had all these businesses and how he's so successful. But I'm like, no, 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 no. A lot of those businesses went bankrupt and he got all of that money from mommy and daddy. So imagine if all of us were born into a billion dollar family, what types of businesses we could have. And who's to say that when we had those businesses, they would go bankrupt? Hell, we could be <laughs> multiplying instead of wasting money. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, I don't know. Uh, when it comes to being at a certain place in your life, like go at your own pace. Absolutely. We're in a yeah. time where everyone compares each other to one another because you see people's lives from social media. You see people's right. lives in pictures and videos and it's like, that picture or that 30 to one minute, 30 seconds to one minute video, it's just a snippet. It's just a snippet. You don't know what really right. goes on. You don't know what struggles they go through. Right. So it's not fair to compare yourself. But you know what? Even then though, and this is kind of something that I feel, I feel like people who do have influence like that, I think they should share their struggle more. Mm -hmm. I agree. That way it kind of, it gets the conversation going and let right. people know that it's a common thing. They're right. not alone. I agree. Exactly. I totally agree. I think that that's something that's important that should be exhibited more. I understand it's very very private it's very personal it's very mm -hmm. vulnerable time but I think people, it's important to let people know like my thing is everybody goes through shit like, right. so, mm -hmm. so my shit how I deal with my shit is how I deal with it maybe me dealing with my shit can help you get through your shit exactly. right but everybody has some shit everybody. so let's talk about it right let's I, talk about I it. totally agree that's why something that I thrive off over strive to do is continue to be transparent mm -hmm. what you see is what you get honey I can tell you whatever you need to know mm -hmm. so my whole thing is I feel as if people need to be like more vulnerable more transparent right. because at the end of the day people gonna view you the way they want to view you that's they're true. gonna talk so about you you gotta that's just right. be yourself and like you said it can help someone else because yeah, exactly. people are going to be judged they're going to be judgmental so at the end of the day you gotta live for yourself so. right that's right. the message always. Do you. Exactly. Do it. I got a hat that said that I'm going to wear that next so Just do <laughs> you. Exactly. Don't worry about what everybody else doing. Do you. If you 35 and you finally get a home, you 35 and you finally get a you home. You got a home. But at least you got a home. home. Yes. Yes. Oh, at least you That's got a home. Man. Everybody can't say that. Some people right. out here 40, 21, they still working up to get to where you're at. Do you. Do you. And do it at your own pace. Right. Yeah. If, if you run a race and you're looking at everybody around you. You're a number one. When you look back, you slow down. Stay in your lane. I'm going to get a shirt that says stay in your lane. Right. Come on, Brent. Because when I'm running into the finish line, I'm looking over here to see what you're doing what you're doing. I'm gonna never make time. Yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. You gonna fall? <laughs> you, gonna, you might look like you gonna trip and fall. That's what I'm gonna worry about. Is myself. Exactly. Yes. Okay, I'm just trying to get, be better than the last time. Ever. Right. Like if you doing good, I'm like good. I'm glad you're doing you doing. You doing great over there. Let me tell you about what I'm doing. Let me do my thing. Right. Let me do my thing. Let's talk about over here. Ain't worried about what everybody else doing. Worried about what I'm 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 doing. Worried about because Javada's getting it. Exactly. Yes. With or without you, whether you're bothered, whether you know, you don't need to. And know. you're getting it, ain't everybody else getting it. Exactly. <laughs> That's what y'all need to understand. Exactly. Whether you just got a job at McDonald's or a Fortune 500 company or you just bought a car, all of those are wins. Those are your you're wins. You're where you're supposed right. to be. That's what you Everybody's mean. winning. All right. It's a state of mind. Right. <laughs> yes, and I, I feel like all of this with stereotypes and societal pressures, all of it goes into mental health. Yes. And I feel like with mental health, especially in the African American community, is something that's not talked about often. Yes. They always try to say, you know, give it to God, just pray. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you need more than just mm -hmm. God to get you through whatever it may be. One thing in particular is depression. Like, I think some people kind of have skewed views of what depression is, but depression really consumes certain people to where they can't get out of bed. It's not that they don't want to get out of bed, but they can't get out of bed. They're so stuck in their thoughts and getting down on themselves that it literally debilitates them. <coughs> and so it's not just praying that will help them. It's not just, you know, giving it to God or, you know, pushing <coughs> through and then going to work. It's something that needs to be addressed. And so with mental health, I think it is important. I think getting therapy, it should be the norm. 
Yeah, you know, you're not crazy if you have a, if you go to a therapist. If anything, you're probably the most sane because you're addressing those is issues head on. You know how I think of it? It's like you you break your leg, mm -hmm. you go to the doctor. Right. If you break your brain, then you should go to the doctor. Exactly. Yeah. People don't view it that way. And the reason why a therapist is a good um, person to be able to talk to my big to because every listening ear could be a running mouth out here nowadays. Right. They really right. want to tell your bitch, oh, she's depressed. <laughs> she right. right. She, she thinking about this little, it's not even that serious. It's like, it's serious to me. Place, right? Yeah, it's, like, it's serious to me. Like, you know, help me out. So, right. some people don't have somebody to run this out to. So, right. the therapy session will, you know, can save a life. Mm -hmm. I right. totally agree. And speaking of that, I am one in the therapy profession. That's what I'm going to graduate school to become. Yes. And I am very passionate about people just expressing their feelings and how they feel. Um, that's the one to me. You, it's, it's okay to tell someone how you feel. And that someone needs to be someone you're confident in. Mm -hmm. Like, expressing that. And some people get that through posts and stuff on Facebook. That is true. Some people do. That is true. Some people go live and that's therapeutic for them. Do it how you If do. that works for you, although I feel as if with Facebook, you may get responses that may not be that exactly. helpful for right. you. Right. But it's really okay to talk to someone because things can progress and then later on, you know, you somewhere going crazy or responding to someone the way you wouldn't have responded if you would have received help. Yeah. So we all need help. I mean, yeah. yes. I talk to my friends, I talk to my family, and one day I will have to have a therapist because of the profession I'm in, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be um, acceptable of certain things. So. Yeah. And don't ever let anybody tell you crazy. Yes. Mm -hmm. You went crazy, I'm, they just I'm don't crazy. understand you. I think my thing with mental illness, especially in the African American community, is just to be mindful of things that are alarming. So I just know from personal experience, I I think the first, what's what I can say, this is like close to home too. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that can happen for someone going through something is for them to cry out for help and you not listen. Mm -hmm. So it's already taken a lot for that person to even build up the courage to maybe to say something to you and tell you that they're going through something. So just don't disregard it. You know, even if you feel like it's something that you wouldn't necessarily take that serious. You never know. Everyone's different. People cope with different things different ways. Some people's brains are strong enough to get them through it alone. Some people's are not. So you have to be able to consider something when someone brings it to you. So I think just take it seriously. I think that's a common thing that's happening is people are just writing things off to dramatics and antics and things like right. that but honestly for me i'm like wee -woo, wee -woo, spongebob yeah. patrick like something is not right no that's really. always my first reaction right well i like i was on facebook one day don't know this kid from a can of paint all i know is that he went he was going to the same high school that i went to and he was talking about ending his life because he had recently lost his little brother and mm -hmm. he was really going through it mm -hmm. And so my first thing in mind is like, let me reach out to him because right, a lot of people are seeing this post on Facebook and not taking it seriously. Oh. I never not take things like that seriously. So I hit him up like, where are you? And I literally drove around Salisbury looking for this little boy because I'm like, I don't want to be the person who saw it. I don't know what it's called where it's like a long time ago, some woman was like screaming for for help, I forgot what exactly it's called. It's in psychology, but pretty much everyone heard her screaming as she, she was getting, yeah, as she was like getting murdered mm -hmm. or whatever. In New York. And everyone just assumed somebody else would, would handle mm -hmm. it. And so she got killed and so all of the neighbors heard her screaming for help and nobody helped. So I'm like, I don't want to be that person. Right. If I see someone calling for help, right. I wanna go, even if I don't know you. Right. And so like I said, I went around looking for him. I didn't find him, but he did reach out and finally let me know that he was okay. And he appreciated that I reached out despite the fact I didn't know him. I'm just like, you never know. Right. Like all it takes is that one person, like from ha having someone jump the bridge or, yes. or what, it, it just takes one of us. So it's like never ignore those things. And with him being black, like a lot of people was like, quit playing man, but no. Nah. It happens to us too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I think that's a good point too, like recognizing the signs. Um, you know, a lot with, with our friends, our family, if people have children, you know, recognize the signs and notice when your child or when your friend is not doing the usual things that mm -hmm. they normally would do. If people are spending more time doing something, let's say they're smoking more, or going or drinking more, I mean, isolating themselves, mm -hmm. um, those are big signals to 
recognize and notice, you know, so I think you should intervene whenever you notice those things. Yes. See what's going on in their head. What would you say, Taylor, are some like signs, like key signs outside of what you just mentioned, like to probably reach out and see it? I'm glad you asked because of my internship. These are things that I've had to study and look at. I know one thing when we talk about depression, you want to make sure you look at, you know, this someone's eating habits. Um, mm -hmm. If they're not eating the same, um, that's a that's a factor. Another thing is their physical activity. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not um, being as active as before or not showing up socially, then if people start packing or start giving a lot of their things away, mm -hmm. that's a sign of suicidal. Um, I, 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 yeah. ideation, I think. Um, things like that. Um, what else did I learn? Eating, activity, sleep. You want to ask someone about their sleeping patterns. And, um, you know, if they can't sleep well, they're it's always in their mind and stressed mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. So, as I, I think those are like the major things that you want to pay attention to. Yeah. And with yourself. Thanks, yes. Yeah. Welcome, girl. No, yeah, absolutely. I even think, too, Dr. like. Dr. As someone who's been depressed before, like now that I, because when I was depressed the first time, I had no idea because I'd never been exposed to it. Like? Um, like you are walking with shackles on your feet. You just feel so Because a, a few weeks ago, I felt like, um, I don't know, maybe I was going to mood swings, but I was feeling like. It's, it's, it's a very heavy feeling. It, I wasn't sad, but I was yeah. just like, what the fuck? Well, yeah. I think it's more like. You know, I think everyone feels sad. That's why I wish more people would talk about their sadness. Right. Everyone experiences sadness, but being depressed is really like, like if I had to look at a year-long calendar, seven months are the rain. Yes. Oh, okay. So I was you know, it's it's prolonged. It's you can it's, feel depressed yes. versus being diagnosed as having depression. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everyone goes through possibly those yes. symptoms because I can attest to, you know, then there's seasonal depression. Yes. I was looking That's at that, me. you know, there's certain times of the year. That's me. Um, yeah, you go through a certain phase and they were saying like certain lighting helps mm -hmm. alleviate yep. that type of depression. In the winter, so, I literally get So depressed. do you think in a, in a lifetime, everyone will uh, experience it or just Some certain people? Depression? But will they know? That's what I'm saying, because I don't know, nobody know. Well, I don't know how it feels. Everyone like, experiences so. it differently. That's the thing about it. Yeah, well, I think so. And I think, like she said, everyone experiences it differently, and everyone goes through depressive episodes, mm -hmm. but not everyone has depression, and a lot of it is inherited, like genetically inherited. Mm -hmm. And it just takes certain things to bring that out. Sometimes you go through, you know, like you can go through a lifetime thinking you're great, but then, like, there's something happening. Let's say you go in the military, and it's like, mm -hmm. Really, it's like all that pressure and then it comes out, right? Or you're filled with like you get into something at work, or just the pressures of life. Um, things may hit you because of different activity events in your life, so yeah. I think they need to make a um, one, I guess not a disorder. I guess I don't know. I feel like sometimes I'm not emotional enough. Well, no, no because that might not necessarily be you, but everyone's different. <laughs> no, everyone's no, different, but like I feel like be more in tune with their emotions. Sometimes you should come see me. We can do a, a genogram and we can talk about your family. Mm -hmm. like, like, I do a genogram. Yeah, I know myself. Like, the only time I feel happens. like I cry is if you really make me upset yeah. to the point where I'm like, oh, I could put hands on you right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably cry for about five minutes. You don't minutes. sad cry? I just mad cry. I never sad cry. Well, actually, cry. you have sad cry, but it, it was in high school, so maybe it's just. What are you talking about when that one session is back to you? <laughs> no. No, it was another incident. Naja, just be acceptable that maybe you just have a high, excuse me, tolerance of happiness. That's like, true. Yeah. You oh. always have very happy energy, and I think it's genuine. It's not that you're trying to cover mm -hmm. anything, I don't yeah. think. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you're just a happy person, and you just don't really have reasons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You may deal with things better than mm -hmm. some people. Now, when I was telling you the story, I was with my um, director had mm. flashed out. <laughs> I controlled myself like, you know, stay calm, low tone. <laughs> but when she walked out the room, I was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think I was more mad because I'm growing. Yeah, I think course. that's what I think that's why growth is always uncomfortable. I, I, and I kind of broke down a little bit. I'm like, tears. I'm like, oh, God, I can't believe I just let her do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, tighten up. Like, you changing. You not right. the old. You know, right. like everything not right. worth the reaction. Right. I was like, well, maybe I'm just grown. You are. Growing it's growth, matured. Right. It's a thing. Totally. Oh, yeah. It's a thing. Yeah, I'm feeling that shit happening. <laughs> <laughs>
to to say that like first episode we talked about all of us boom I I got my masters but I'm not in a position that I feel is worthy of a masters she just lost her job she's not working she's working two jobs and working towards her masters right. and like we're not necessarily where we want to be but we're working my it. story's gonna right. help someone exactly right. and so like and I'm actually comfortable with that. Exactly. Yeah. I don't see no problem doing what I'm doing. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Exactly. I'm I know people that look up to all of us like, dang, I yeah, wish yeah. we was doing what I was doing. I wish I had that it's hustle or that drive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's people out here that want to be us and we like, we feel like we're not even doing enough. Right. So we appreciate it. So it pushed me yeah. more. Yeah, it, it pushed push me more. And we know you can be where we're at or even further. Be where you're supposed to be. Right. Don't, worry, don't be where we're at. Be where you are supposed to be. Right. That's the best place to be because yeah. it's for you. It's, all right. it's made for you. You fit right in. Exactly. And given to also what I was saying about how we're here for your support, to support you in the times. Um, also, make sure that you try to be around like good energy and like really great environments because your environment really affects your mood yes. right. along with music and yes. just things that you tend to surround yourself around right. it's going to affect your mood so mm-hmm. if you can find something or people that are more positive or more positive vibes like that right. definitely help too right like will smith I, I feel like i've been talking about will smith a lot because i, love I just great. love him so much especially on ig like yes. he's my instagram dad <laughs> and I just love him. But he made a video recently just talking about how there are certain people who come into your life and they're there to help, you know, keep your light shining. And then there are others who are there to literally piss on it. Mm-hmm. And so you got to be able to decipher the two. Yeah, you got to be able to, to tell the difference. That way you can get rid of the people who aren't really there to support you and uplift you. They're the ones who get you into these down feelings who make you feel depressed get rid of them right and hold on to the ones who uplift you and who make you happy and who make sure you have a good time yeah they see you walk into the room something ain't right they like hey turn up come on let's let's do this (laughs) grab a glass of wine okay we're gonna talk about your feelings who that who that who that we're gonna talk about your feelings (laughs) and we're gonna have a great day right right hold on to those folks because those are the ones who are going to help propel you forward um Mm -hmm. and that's why i love my girlfriend Girl, I love you guys too. It's all, yes. all the one. Good they call me a gypsy. We call her the, the golden, golden gypsy. gypsy. Yes. She got all the positive. Yeah. And, and I say this good. girl got quotes for days. Like it's time to go. Good night. So long. <laughs> Farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. For now. For now. Until we meet again. Uh, uh. Uh, it's been uh, great uh, to uh, play uh, everything uh, together uh, ooh, out of the box. Oh, and now oh, it's time oh. to say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Bye.